James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, we're going to do a quick space weather update for you today. Today is the 27th of August, 2025. We're having a slow day as far as uh, geomagnetically. We're looking at our KP indexes. These are ground-based measurements of solar winds and plasma striking Earth. And we don't really see anything except for on the Boulder Index, we see three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Everything else looks very, very tame. I think you all know that we regularly use the Estimated Planetary Index, an updated measurement system that NOAA and NASA exclusively use. Although things can change at any moment, all is quiet on the Western Front. The big flare of the day is going to be this sea flare here. And it was a strong sea flare. Uh, C, 9.27, something like that. Very, very close to being an M flare, but it just didn't make the grade. Of course, that was measured on our GOES satellite using our x-ray flux all right over to hmi intensigram our sun is looking ugly i count 12 sunspot groups 4203 looks like it's going around the far limb and should be around that limb by day's end and well that leaves us with 11 more and probably more to be named very shortly what are we concerned about? We're concerned about 4191, directly Earth-facing currently. Looks like 4200 is becoming a little bit more complex. We're worried about 4197 big time. And 4199, all those have produced strong flares as they were facing the gas giants coming around the inside limb here. I believe that Facing the gas giants had a lot to do with the large flares that they produced. This was taken a little bit earlier. Here we have 13 sunspots. So something over here has either lost its its numbering. Um, well, we could check it out, but it's not going to be that important. Again, worried about 4191, 4199, 4197. And maybe 4201 and 02 here. We've been in a solar storm, not a geomagnetic storm, for most of the day today. We've just fallen out of that. Just went below the space weather threshold there. That is the 10 million volt line. So we're currently in a polar cap absorption event because of these protons. This is off our GOES satellite again, using the proton flux on it. But I'm guessing that polar cap absorption event will start to fade. We'll go over that as well in just a moment. Now, it'll start to fade unless we have another strong Earth-facing solar flare. Let's make sure that we understand that. Today is the 27th. And they've got solar winds going up and above 600 kilometers per second, but there's not been a coral hole that's Earth-facing in more than days. You know, the EESA has the same thing over on theirs, but there's just nothing there. They have plasma down here starting the day at about 4 and ending the day at about 2. Solar winds starting the day at about... About 500 going up to about 625 and maybe ending the day at 550, something like that. Over to our D region absorption prediction table, we see that we're still in a polar cap absorption event, meaning we still have x rays and protons pouring in the north and south poles. This time it's mainly in the north. We regularly see this mainly in the south. And obviously, we have areas of our poles that aren't as protected from our Van Allen belts as the rest of the planet, which allows protons and x-rays to seep in. Look at the radio alternation in the North Pole. 
No one's going to be talking to anyone on the radio anytime soon. In the meantime, we're frying like eggs, especially, especially those that live near the poles. All right, we just paid over $1.3 million to upgrade that Space Weather Prediction Center I just showed y'all. Our shields are up here in blue. Plasma, they had going from about 4 to 2. It is all over the place, but generally, what they said is going to be close enough. It really is close enough uh, for a pretty good prediction there. Now, solar winds, not so much. It's the beginning of the day here at 340, jumped up to 405. If you'll recall, they're starting out at 500, and they're moving up to 650. And they're fishing the day at 550. Well, that's just not happening here, period. And temperatures are very mild. Terrible call on the solar winds. I just don't see what the ESA and NOAA and NASA saw as far as a crawl hole, which is really the only thing that produces solar winds. Film eruptions and solar flares produce CMEs, plasma, coronal mass ejections. Heading over to our other solar, wind, and plasma satellite, ACE. That was discovered. This is ACE. It's an older one. And we see our shields are up here in blue. They do have plasma moving between. Well, there are some anomalies here that move it very high, but just for three or four minutes here total. Uh, based on the temperature jump, it looks like it could or could not be a real event. Hard to say. They got solar winds so far off on that Space Weather Prediction Center, 350 to 360. And temperatures are basically very mild as discussed. Here the plasma is a little bit stronger, but generally a pretty good prediction there. Now, as we know, none of the M-class solar flares were Earth-facing. They were facing, well, the gas giants as they came around the limb of our sun to be Earth-facing. You can see how mild they have the next three days looking. The, well, KP index is again the combination of solar winds and plasma is very very relaxed and mild we should expect no problems whatsoever uh, even if we see a large solar flare today or tomorrow it will still take some period to get here depending on how large it is over to sto hmi magnetogram we've got a lot of complex sunspots here uh, we have this black over white negative over positive in the northern hemisphere it's going to be four, uh, 4199. And then we have a reverse polarity sunspot here. The positive over the negative, white over black. And that's going to be 4197, I believe, right? Uh, so this is these are huge problems here. And this is the other one that's directly Earth-facing. We'll have to see if they're going to fire, but they're all set up to very complex and ready to rumble. And looking for that coronal hole that they, well, forecasted all that solar wind from. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. We have a small coronal hole that's not missing a lot of the canopy here. Uh, we have 4191 here, 4197 here. 4199 here and 01 and 02 here and here. Those are our concerns. This is Soho 284 Angstroms. Gives you a good idea of what's going on. Take a quick look at the back of our sun. For some silly reason, they say we can't get a satellite back there, which I know we have several back there. Uh, so this is an artist rendition or a composite. You can see we have this absolutely huge sunspot. This is about a day and a half old, the 25th and a half here. So this has already been named here and come around. What we're waiting on is this huge 019 
I guess O two one and I think that little dot right there might be O two O. I'm pretty sure that it is. Doesn't look real dangerous to me, although O one nine looks extremely dangerous. It's directly on the back side of the sun though, so we have some time. Uh, at least four or five days before we see that one coming around the limb. Over to the planets today. We still have a geomagnetic connection to Pluto, Sirius, Saturn, Neptune. This is where those flares went. And Eris. And these are watch days. We had a 6-1 and a 6-0 based on this lineup here. I didn't report either one of them. Well, we might do an earthquake and volcanic report tonight and include those. But the watch dates are really going to be the, I believe, 9th and 10th. Let's get into, bring the sun into play here. It's the 9th here. It's not a perfect lineup, but it's getting pretty dangerous in 10th. And then even more so, we have a geomagnetic connection all of a sudden to Uranus at a 9 degree angle textbook terrible right here and that's going to be the 21st really the 20th through the 22nd uh look at that it's just going to be textbook situation for an uptick in solar flares volcanic activity and especially earthquakes there's a lot of tugging going on on the 20th through the 22nd God bless you guys. Please share our video. Please help the channel out by buying us a coffee or giving us a super thanks if you find it in your heart. And always remember, anything's possible in bizarro world. God bless you all.